And the Swans facing a huge task to get back into it as they go from right to left. And they gain ground from the bounce, and Healy has some space from 55 metres. He goes for home, and it's touched. Well done, Langford. Just getting a fingernail onto the ball. And so the Swans' first impressive sortie forward registers just a minor, but at least it uh, was an encouraging start. Langford kicks very long straight down the centre. Kennedy will take on Ironmonger. It's punched down to Platten, who's roving the socks off his opponents. Sends it out wide. Cordy's now been... No, he's still at centre-half forward. Muse pursuing him. Hand passes nicely to Healy. Healy's got the chance to send a long bomb in and centre it, which he does downfield. Kappa the leaper from behind. Almost took one. Ayres very clever. Back it comes luckily to him, actually. Hand passes on further. In lots of trouble are they now. And eventually it's Deer who kicks to the centre. John Kennedy comes in. Awkward one. Browning with the ball. Tackle. Gets onto his left foot. And underneath it, Chris Langford, the only person at home. Quickly out to Morris. That was Ayres on to Morris. Morris downfield. Rodney Eads chance. Good leap, but very nicely spoilt that time by the brilliant Murphy. Umpire's whistle has gone. It was out of bounds. And Tommy perhaps sending a message down to be relayed to the boundary umpire. Looking very anxious. Hardly surprising. 43 plays 11. And as they were here last year, the Swans blitzed early by Hawthorne. Great handball, Williams to Browning. Up to full forward, Kappa caught under the ball. Great work, Langford. Ayres has been in control, but oh, he kicked that too powerfully. He just meant to chip it a small distance and try and reach the boundary on the bounce. But uh, he made contact, which was a bit better than he'd hoped. And Hawk will take the free kick within scoring range, about 40 metres out. But uh, the angle from the boundary line is very tight. Good looking kick. Oh, it's a fine kick. And as they did in the first turn, the Swans kicked the first goal of the second quarter. And they've looked better in the first two minutes of this term as they've cut the margin to 26 points. Hawks always had the reputation as being one of the most skilled players with the Sydney Swans, but on the fitness side of things, there's been a big question mark next to his name. And uh, last year, he struggled early in the season to get a game, mainly because of his fitness, but he definitely showed that the skill level of, uh, of Hawk is still there. So that was a great goal. Must be a big help uh, to the Swans as far as confidence is concerned. Back it comes to centre bounce. Kennedy solid, tucked the same. Out wide, Jamie Dunstall, awkward one. Great punch by Curran, disputing with Carter. And it's over the line, out of bounds. But they swing into attack again to the Hawks. It's on the grandstand half-forward flank. There's three minutes gone into the second term. And the Hawks are blisterous. 7-1 in the first term. Harding up, Ironmonger won it. Healy fights for it. Tries to hook it out to Holden. He's unsuccessful. And at exactly, almost exactly the same spot. Boundary umpire in possession. 50 metres from Hawthorne's goal. Harding jostling with the giant ironmonger. Two former Western Australians. Holden to the centre line. A lot of courage, Cordy. Support from Morwood. Oh, beautifully done, Collins, just to steal the ball from him. But superbly tackled by his opponent, Williams. Morwood. Cordy now, and deserved to come out with the ball after his initial effort. Kappa, plenty of spoilers, and a throw in on the half forward flank for the Swans. And that's the sign of a good side. When you've got a player like Kappa who can take a mark, you don't take the opportunity of letting him go one out with his opponent, such as Langford, who's also good in the air. It's always better to have another man coming across the top and thumping the ball away. And that's the way Hawthorne are playing it in defence. Yes, and Ayers did that beautifully. That is Kevin's described. Ayers a great player. Out it comes wide. Mitchell's kick is smothered nicely by Deer, who's been a solid contributor. Platten been an excellent one. Over towards Collins. Williams has been quiet. I'm not quite sure, Kev, whether it's because Collins is the pounder. He just can't get into the game. He hasn't played that close to him. He hasn't been shoulder to shoulder. But uh, Williams has uh, made position several times. But with the Swans players under pressure, the ball hasn't been delivered. And he hasn't been able to set up those, those rocket hand passes. A good move by Alan Jeans. He's also he's got Harding on the field. Uh, at the start of this quarter, along with Deer, and that's going to put a lot of pressure in the ruck on, on Ironmonger, and we've seen Ironmonger tire in the past. The Hawks by 26 points, approaching the five-minute mark. Tuck beautifully to Platten. You saw that uh, very clearly. Williams, lovely hand pass to Browning from 60 metres. He could do it. He's done it. A beauty. Oh, the former skipper with that magic left boot. 
unloading with everything he had then. And the Swans have kicked the first two in the second quarter and the margin back to 20 points. Well, there's Platten. He's been a marvellous player, but uh, Williams there, that was a, a wonderful hand pass out to Browning, who's ever alert. And then the number of hand passes Browning gets off Williams, it's just a, a great tally. And he got onto that one with the big torpedo. We, we saw uh, Browning a couple of weeks ago against Richmond have six shots for goals from the half-back line. And today already three defenders have kicked goals. Ironmonger tried to find Williams and or Healy. Missed both of them. Falling after it, Platten. Umpire letting it go. Mitchell eventually. Morris and Browning. Morris won it. Browning looked for a free kick. Umpire said, no, you're not to get one. Russell Morris, beautiful build for a halfback flanker. About 187 or 188 centimetres. Over the back it comes. Tuck. Can't get foot to ball. Tries the fist. Out to Platten. Platten very quick. Steadying was dear. Not a very good one, but Ede will make the best of it. Ede should take a free kick. Two to one against him. I thought the free was on there. It's not awarded. And the umpire indicates again, ball up. Couldn't agree more, Douglas. How a man could be tackled like that from behind and be sent stumbling to the ground and not get a free is beyond me. But the Hawks are doing better on the freeze tally so far. So far, eight to six. And now a free kick plucked out and it favours the Swans. Murphy breaks away with his speed. Ran the full measure. Puts them into attack. Cordy the knock on, but nothing there. Kappa bearing down on the ball. Nicely done, Kappa. Hawk. Well done. Good smothering, though, by Hawthorne. Bolton. Whistle. Swans free kick. And Hawk to take it. Just outside 50 metres. They are kicking long distances. Kappa in space. That was a great lead by Kappa. He really sprinted to make space there and full marks to Hawk, as we mentioned before, a very skillful player. And he really drilled that ball out towards Kappa. He didn't allow it to float. He really put the boot into it. And that enabled Kappa to take that before Langford could get, Langford could get across. So the Swans closing the gap. It's presently 20 points. Kicked it. Kappa's first. Makes it 14, and this is a big comeback from the Sydney Siders. Three goals in seven and a half minutes in the second term, and we've got a game now at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Well, the Swans uh, have been noted for their fighting spirit. A couple of players already in this quarter have started to exert their influence for the Swans, badly out of it in that first quarter. Hawks already kicked a goal, and of course uh, he passed that one to Kappa. I just don't know where uh, his opponent Langford was because it was Ayers who came in eventually then. I noticed Kappa alone and unattended and really uh, Langford had a lapse in concentration somewhere. Picked up by Bolton, haven't seen much of him. Holden, downfield, great position, Cordy, what a wonderful mark. Well, against a talented, very talented opponent and beautifully taken by Graham Cordy at centre half forward and he has a wonderful chance to goal. Well, he replaced Smith uh, early in that uh, first quarter, and since then, uh, he has been a good player. And in this quarter also, along with Hawke, he's been one player to be able to drive them forward. And he kicks from about 50 metres from goal, just inside. It doesn't do it well. He could have gone a lot closer into Mew that time and made it a little bit shorter, at least. He didn't. Misses it. Well, I think, having a look at his grip on the ball with one hand lower than the other, uh, it always looked on that he might drop it a little awkwardly. And it was never on line. He's had two set shots at goal. Both have missed. Ayers looks for Tuck, who's got two to beat. His opponent, Healy. Bolton getting better in this match. But away goes Kennedy. To half forward. Great delivery to Harding. Out on the half forward flank. But 80 metres from goal. Gets 15 metres. Virtually finessed it. Yes. Doesn't look un unlike fellow uh, Western Australian Lester Smith. Harding, Abbott. Goes backwards a long way to Dipper. Good delivery to Kennedy. And the Swans found wanting there as Hawthorne moved the ball around quickly in the scoring zone. And Kennedy will have a shot from 40 metres out. He's kicked one. Their first. And a chance to become their first to have two in this match. He is. Goal umpire not moving, or barely moving. Hawthorne get their eighth and they needed the steadier after the Swans had kicked the first three of the quarter and at the 10 minute mark Hawthorne 19 point leaders well there's no doubt that uh, that uh, 15 metres was finessed by Harding but 
the kick that came across to Kennedy completely unattended there he's an elusive player for a guy who's about six foot four he takes a lot of marks by himself very an unusual word but he's completely efficient as John Kennedy doesn't miss anything he should do does everything with skill here comes Williams awkward one for Cordy new goes the thump picked up by Hawk and might have taken a free he will that's the third free kick he's got in this term and deservedly tries to find Kappa unsuccessful Healy's in front Bayes picks it up right foot snap is very difficult he hooks it back with tremendous skill and what an extraordinary goal kick of this young man is we've seen him pick some freak goals that was not his natural foot and a magnificent snap from about a 50 degree angle well he was formerly uh, a footscray player but uh he was allowed to go to the Swans. Last year, he struggled for a permanent place. But this year, he's in the state squad and he's kicked a couple of miracle goals. Out at Collingwood, he kicked a couple of goals of the year. If, uh, I think he's going to figure in them at the, at the end of the ABC free season. Well, being a former Footscray man and now doing well at another club, he'll probably win a Brownlow before <laughs> his career's over, Kev. As from the bounce, the Swans can go into attack again. Beautifully taken by Murphy. Doing well in this quarter. Bad hand pass for Mitchell. Put him under pressure. Collins, now Dunstall, a long way up ground. Well tackled by Hawke. Deer, all wild kick by Browning, but not penalised. Curran, Kennedy from the centre line, and the Hawks into attack again. Out in front of Harding, too far in front of him, and that time Kennedy, for once Douglas, wasting the ball. He should have delivered a bit better, and he waves an apology to Harding because it wasn't a good pass. Yes, he had all the time in the world, too. Not like young John. Young John is 29 years old, so he's no longer young John in football. Harding's the man fighting for the ball there, number 12. The man who was at the end of a costly legal dispute with the West Australian Eagles, which the Hawks won. And now they've got, in the two cases, something like $80,000 legal fees to fight about. Here comes Hawk again. Dunstall takes him on. Williams, the lightning man, kicks it downfield. Chris Mew comes across. Awkward bounce. Taken lucky bounce to Ayers, who's been a splendid player. Not a good kick, and Tui takes it. And Tui's going on with the business. Out to Williams. Williams, the lightning left hand. Out to Bolton. In comes Dipper to take him on. Tuck helps him. Tuck takes it away from him. Russell Green under pressure now. Lucky one to, goes to Curran, but Curran beautifully to Platten. And Platten out wide. Underneath it's an easy one to Abbott. If ever there was a perfect pass, that one was and Abbott takes the mark. Well, he's filled in very well. Another very capable, efficient player is Paul Abbott. Well, he judged that uh, to perfection, Platten, because he realised Carter was six foot two, so he kicked it six foot three along the ground. Just <laughs> wasn't it? Abbott kicks for goal, and Abbott kicks it very well. It's very quiet. There's scenes going on. There's a free kick being given in the ten-yard square, and I was wondering why everything had hesitated, and the crowd was suddenly quiet, and there's an infringement occurred right in the teeth of goal. Didn't the ball go through for a goal? It the did. goal did, but after the whistle had blown, I would guess, and therefore it would be null and void. And the man who's to take it is Dermot Brewer. It was a set shot, though, Douglas, which confuses me. Now, if a player from a set shot has kicked a goal, really Hawthorne are being penalised. D disadvantaged if he happens to miss this. Yes. Well, in any case. Generally, uh, you should pay what the, uh, the maximum result is. And in that case, you should have walked forward and asked him. You couldn't ask him if he'd have another kick, could he? I don't know. The umpire should have plenty of time to think about it. The net result is the same. It's a goal to Dermot Brereton. And it was a splendid kick of Abbott's in the most beautiful pass of Platten's. And the Hawks back in the game. Again. For a moment, I was wondering whether it might have been one of those controversial double goal situations where if a player after a goal has been scored and the all clear is given, uh, is infringed against. He can be given an, a, a kick yeah. and kick a second goal, but it certainly wasn't that. It's one goal to the Hawks. Well, that's simply because the umpire hadn't given the all clear. So 55 plays 36. Still a contest, though, with the Swans fighting their way back into it, but uh, the Hawks showing plenty of steadiness in this quarter, and they're into attack again through Platten, a star. Dunstall front position. Good spoil, Carter. Kennedy, Dippy and Domenico. Where to go? Nowhere to go. Browning smothers well and kicks off the ground for a throw in on the wing. Dipper just perhaps overdoing it a touch then. He didn't really have the room to try and work his way clear. And the Swans prizing possession away from the Hawks. Craig Davis, a message to Greg Williams. Deer is good. Oh, Ironmonger went for Platt and missed him. Mitchell to Williams. Oh, beautiful hand pass to Hawk. Hawk downfield, the safe hands. No of can't reach it. Stevie Wright. 
Kicks it long and Kappa's in lovely position, but Langford is going to punch it away from him. In comes Fryer Tuck, cleverly to, to Langford. Langford will find Dipper Domenico with not a soul near him. Bolton trying to make up speed. Dipper can go once and steady. Bolton's a very fast player, and a, what a terrible kick by Dipper straight to Carroll. What fantastic play by Bolton, because Dipper looked behind, he saw Bolton, who made up some 15 metres and made him kick the ball under a little bit more pressure. Tui from the wing. Swan's putting it together well, but not a good kick from Tui. And a throw in on the wing, on the half forward flank for the Swans as a result. And yes, Kev, he intimidated him with his speed. It, that was a lesson for all kids who... Uh, play football that if you keep chasing even though you mightn't get the ball yourself your team re the result is your team may get it because of you putting pressure Cordy rucking and getting it beautifully to Mitchell but a bad kick Mew out to the wing Brereton from behind the leaper didn't really get hands on the ball though Williams starting to get better in this quarter Tui nice hand pass to Mitchell from the center line goes for Kappa too far at the back Morwood and, and Morris well played Morris for a throw in in the Swans board pocket. Well, Could be West well time to make a move maybe now on Williams because mm -hmm. he's absolutely dominated this quarter. He's, he's got completely on top of Collins and uh, playing alongside Hawk. That's been the, the reason why the Swans are back in this game. I agree. Graham Cordy with another tremendous leap. Oh, kick is a bad one. A left footer went out wide. It was Harding and kicked it out of bounds and Stephen Wright will take the free kick. Yes, I was just going to say exactly what you said, Kevin, that uh, it's been a dynamic quarter by Williams, and unless you watch very closely, you could even miss it. These hand passes are so lightning quick, and they are such a rifle shot, and Stephen Wright out to the man in question, and Collins will be castigated for that. And because of that small man dominance, they've taken Abbott off the ground, and they've brought on Loveridge, who's been off since quarter time. Here comes Mitchell, shoots for goal. Hand pass came from Healy. Mitchell hooked it too far, and Mitchell's had a quiet day up to date and puts it through for one behind. And the scoreboard is Hawthorne 9-1. What astonishing kicking. And Sydney 5-7. 12 scoring shots to 10 in the Swans' favour. They're getting better. And the Hawks have got a job in front of them now after looking as though they were going to go right on with it in the first quarter. Jenke to the wing. Looks for Mew, but he's well beaten. And Cordy is doing well at centre-half forward. Not paid. Surprises me. Kennedy. All current. Well met by Tui. Rugged halfback for the Swans, and Curran gives him a pat on the seat and says, fair enough, well played. And nice to see that bit of sportsmanship in such a physical game. Yes, Curran, a very large family in Canterbury. He's a great sport. Picked up there by Murphy. Murphy sends it very long downfield, and it's going to be Kappa and Langford again. Kappa got hands to ball. Great bump, which Healy took beautifully and kicked a freak goal. No, it's missed. Missed by a whisker. Didn't he take that bump? Magnificent. Rode it magnificently. Greg Healy, Gerard Healy, who's really been a magnificent player in best and fairest for the clubs that he's played for in the last few years. Short pass out to Ayres. Ayres wisely takes his time. Swans have kicked 4-4 to two straight in this quarter, which they are dominating, although not quite translating it into goals on the board. Ayres beyond halfback. Mew tries to mark, couldn't quite do so. Well done, Murphy. Oh, beautiful footwork to right. Long shot is close. It hit the post. Oh, it deserved a goal. The setup by Murphy was superb. And the Swans get their ninth behind and trail by just 16 points. The Hawks looking a bit bedraggled. Langford tries to kick to Dippy Domenico. In comes Curran to leap high. And a great spoil by two. He's been a fine player. Here comes Browning. Good tackle. Cut, tuck. Ooh, down. Ooh, Williams was into him, Morris. And Williams very disappointed at the free kick played. And very angry, as you can see, the swarthy short young man, who was such a dynamic player. 15 metres against him. Understandably, wide it goes out. Looking for the high-marking skill of Curran. And nobody at home at all. Bolton, Dipper, Domenico both stayed down. And Curran, who's a splendid mark, kicks it short to Brereton. Great diving, tumbling mark. And the blonde-headed man has played beautifully, Dermot Brereton. He's kicked two. He's been responsible for one, easy one to John Kennedy, but always been a worthy focal point to attack. And really up to date has been the reason that the Hawks forward line has looked so good. Very difficult angle. About 65 degrees, 40 metres out from goal. Kicks for goal across the face of goal and goes. And it's out of bounds. Free kick on the floor. 
And Brereton, professional that he is, quickly chases to pick up his man as Holden takes the free kick. And well done, Brereton, who's now alongside Carroll over on that side of the ground. Moore with the leaper, couldn't grab the ball. Good knock on Stevie Wright. Green quiet in this quarter, and so has been Loveridge. Platten trying to get under it, can't. Henwood, oh, straight to Platten. Held him, was he in possession? Yes. And a throw in in Hawthorne's forward pocket. It was bad defensive play. Uh, no doubt the, the play should have been just to run the ball over the boundary line. Well, he's given away two shocking free kicks, Henwood, and looked pretty undisciplined. This one's over the line again. It's the Hawks in attack. They're 9 1 55 to the Sydney Swans 5 9 39. Ironmonger, Mammoth first quarter. Not so great in the second one, but still a good player. Looks to get. Oh, did it very well, the Hawk. On to Browning. At centre half back. Drives perfectly in the Morwood direction. Healy comes out and gets an awkward bounce. Tuck takes him on. Ayres has been absolutely magnificent in defence and saves it. Back it comes to Tuck from the Ayres tap. Tuck sends it wide downfield. Johnny Platten's got too much against him. The Swans spoil each other. Kennedy out to Green. Green will shoot for goal. And Green kicks it long and kicks it wide. Through for one behind. Well. The defence wasn't too solid in that particular case, and Henwood's ready to kick out. It's been much better this quarter, though, for the Swans, preventing uh, the Hawks from building on their lead and, in fact, cutting it back. Oh, great mark, Harding. Well done. Lead from Curran. Delivery not good. Too far for him. Pressure on Curran. No support either. Mitchell back to the centre line. Cordy out in front. Morris, too far for Mew. Williams pushed in the back, gets a free kick. What Graham Cordy has given the Swans is a lot of mobility now across that half forward line. Big Tony Smith wasn't uh, moving across, and that seemed to suit Chris Mew, but Cordy is roaming all over the ground. And an extraordinary spring he's got, Kev. It's been a brilliant, it's really a, a very promising Jack in the young box. player. Yes, he looks good, and another credit to Tom Hafey snapping him up. Dermot, a late leaper. Man in front must take it. Tui. Murphy, I think. It's a little Murphy, yes, isn't it? Is. It's yeah. even better. What a great little player this one is. Dermot was late on the scene, and there's Murphy, a very good leap, too. And a 15 metre penalty. But this is a young man who's really looking the goods. Down towards centre half forward. Morwood went late. Kappa with the ball. Out to Hawke, who should have taken a free. Langford's with it, and he fumbles ever so badly. Hawk in it again, fighting. This time he might get one. Kappa's caught two, and it's Hawthorne everywhere through Langford. Langford out. Ede is marked over by Murphy with spectacular skill and sends a thumping kick, and that is the play of the match. What magnificent and you won't play. won't see any better than that. What a leap, what a mark, and what a kick. David Murphy, that was simply stunning. Look at him, you want to be proud of that? Well, Murphy is in the state squad. It is a great mark. I thought originally he may have tapped the ball down to Stevie Wright because there was two against one. He elected to take, he had to sit. It was a great mark. And that's the sort of play Tom Hafey likes, that long bomb into the goal square. And what a magnificent kick to cap off a brilliant piece of play. You wouldn't see better than that. I don't think I've ever seen better than that in a football match as an individual effort. Williams to Browning on his natural left boot. Long beyond half board, but very steady as Mew. And he needed to be as the Swans are throwing everything at Hawthorne in this quarter. They've cut the lead to 11 points at the 24-minute mark. Across ground to Loveridge. Call from Green who gets the chip pass, and he's unopposed. He's got 10 metres, and the Hawks can run. Ede now on the other side of the ground. Has a look, sizes up the options. Goes for Abbott. Great spoil, though. Right, Healy, Browning, and the left footer. On that side of his body again to Bayes, another great left footer. Forced to go onto the right, but does it well with plenty of acceleration. Centering kick drops short, and Mew is the man in the way again. And the man with eyes on the ball who's taken two very sound, steady marks. Chris Mew, a state centre halfback and a very worthy state centre halfback, sends it long. Your leap, Langford. Should have held, did hold it on the second bite. Well done, Chris Langford, who'd come a long way downfield. 
takes a fine mark from a well-directed kick from you, drives it like a bullet to Kennedy. Kennedy in a flash, Lubridge will be caught, gets it quickly across to Tuck, and the umpire's almost in the road. Tuck's long one out to centre wing position, looks good. Steading was Harding, Harding to Curran a bit too long. No, Curran did it. This is the man who wins the Courage Award, often at Hawthorne, and he didn't take his eye off the ball then. And Curran takes it well back to Tuck, and that was too easy. Too easy, Tuck alone and unattended. And Tuck, who came from Berwick as a full forward many, many, many moons ago to the Hawks, has got the chance to shoot for goal from about 50 metres out. Michael Tuck, who also at one stage in his career played very well at centre-half forward for Hawthorne. Kicks it long, just off direction. He really had to kick that very hard. He's had a big job today lining up on Greg Healy. Healy so far, I feel, has taken the points, but Tuck has been a pretty fair performer for the Hawks. Bolton receives the short kick in. Yeah, perhaps there's a bit of breeze out there because Tuck is a noted long kicker of the ball, but uh, as Doug said, had to give it everything he had from 50 metres. The big dipper. Centering pass for Kennedy. Too far for him. Holden. Loveridge in the way, but well played Holden. Healy pressured out of it. Kennedy from the 50 metre line, but nothing there for Hawthorne. And Henwood takes it 15 metres from Hawthorne's goal. Right. The Swans setting it up with good running, but a bad hand pass. Well smothered by Abbott. Dunstall. Centering kick. Brereton one out. Got it. Always had it. Was never going to miss that. I felt Browning should have attempted to hit Brereton's arm then. Tried to hit the arm or the shoulder really tried to knock him off balance so that when he was taking that mark but he just didn't quite really do anything for goal number three and number 10 for the hawks he sprayed it it's a bad miss made the goal umpire laugh <laughs> nine four plays six nine and the hawks when they wanted a goal to give them some breathing space get it behind and lead by 13 points well ayers is off the ground obviously he's been playing so well he may have a problem and they've had to put Eag now into the back pocket on the resting swans rovers here's bolton long hand passes good football out to holden holden's got the chance to run waiting for him down there is Tui. misses what he might have taken crawls after it Bays the very quick runner and the beautiful kicker of a football down in the Kappa direction. Two against him. Wins it. Free kick to Kappa. Well, it's not, not on. Picked up by Hawk and shoots for goal. Hawk kicks and there's a roar from the crowd. It must be right. Paul Hawk, you're very clever and very skillful. That's his second goal. And I thought Kappa merited a free kick. Let's have a look at Kevin. Well, from the box here, it certainly looked as if it was a free kick to Kappa. Fought hard to the front position, then dragged to the ground by the shoulder. Undoubtedly, that was a free kick. But then Kappa, the ball brought back out to Hawke, and Hawk, the skills of Hawke then, that was a soda for him to pop that through. Well done, Kappa, wasn't it? It was, because he fought hard. And uh, often with Kappa, if, if he's not paid that free kick, sometimes, you know, he may appeal to the umpire, but he actually kept following that ball through. Well, could the Swans be in front by half-time? 28 minutes down in the quarter. They trail by seven points. Murphy, sensational goal a short time ago. Morris, off half-back for Hawthorne. Kicks to half-forward. Brereton coming from behind. Good knock-on. Doesn't come off. Loveridge and Curran and Kennedy. Gains ground for Hawthorne, but no receivers there. Browning the first man there. All pressured well. In goes Mitchell with plenty of courage. And back to it he goes. Threads the hand pass to Browning. To Carroll from halfback. Tony Moore with the target. Well held so far by Morris. Cordy. Now a ball up 60 metres from the Swans goal. And again locals feel they should have got a free kick out of that they're showing they're learning the supporting caper I don't they think know when to boo I don't think there was a free kick there it was more hopeful I think by the Swans well, know, supporters well as one of the umpires told us a few weeks ago he's never heard a noise like at this Sydney ground when the Hawks are going when the Swans are going well here's a free kick to Williams the angry ante is at times Rick Williams is a good looking kick it's a beautiful kick and how splendidly judged was it by Cordy but what a perfect kick it was. He just does never make a mistake, does Greg Williams. 
he's been a surprise pack at Cordy since he's Hasn't he? he's come onto the ground because the mobility of him uh, running all over he's up on the wing in one minute next minute he's in the center of the ground then back at center half forward and that was a quick lead then by Cordy and Mew has found him a little bit difficult trying to keep up with him and he's contested so strongly in the air can take a great mark I remember his first senior game at the MCG a couple of years ago he took a screamer 35 meters out if every um, young man's deserved a goal young Cordy has and Graham Cordy the youngest of the three footballing brothers from the Footscray area has been a very impressive player today there's Greg Williams and Cordy has replaced his brother Neil Cordy in the team uh, it didn't say so in the paper it just had that Cord Neil Cordy was out but in fact he's out because he's got two broken ribs so one brother's misfortune is the other brother's luck and as ever Diesel making everybody around him travel first class with a beautifully weighted pass I'm surprised that uh, they haven't made the move of putting a, a different tagger on Greg Williams this quarter because he's brought the Swans right back into this game one point the difference Hawthorne's lead at quarter time was 33 points it's back to one almost siren time Morwood to cap a one out but the siren beats him it is quarter time at the Sydney Cricket Ground a great second quarter by the Swans 